We already saw what an entity is and we understood that by attaching some components it's possible to change the behavior and give some abilities to these entities. In the previous video I created this scene where I have a camera, a light and a mesh and I created these entities uh, by calling these three functions that I created. Let's review them. By starting with camera, the first thing that I do is to create the transformation of the camera. Then what I do is to create uh, the camera, but the most notable things to talk about is this part of the function where there is create entity called to the world. This function creates a entity builder that allow me to specify some components and using the function build it creates the entity with the components and add to the world. So let's review the next function, the add light entity. Here is more or less the same where I am uh, creating the transformation, I am creating again the light and using the function create entity I am creating the entity builder which accepts as component light and transformation and after the build it creates the entity and assign to the world. What we can see from these two functions is that the the process to create an entity is not only simple, but it also follow always the same pattern. Another thing to notice is that the order of the components definition doesn't matter because, for example, here I am defining the transformation after the light and here I am defining the camera transformation before the camera, so the order doesn't matter. Let's review the sphere and more or less we are in the same position when, where I am defining the mesh, I am defining the material, I am defining the transformation and here I am creating the entity builder and I am setting the sphere transfer mesh material and after the build my entity is created and it is important to notice that I am not assigning the material to the mesh but I am assigning the material uh, as component of the entity. The question is what the world is? Let's try to see what's inside. We can see that the world is a wrapper of the resources and we can see the resource like an array or a list where we can store things and we can retry when we want. Indeed, in Amethyst, this is the way how the data travel inside uh, the systems. For example, you can create a resource inside a system and there, there is another system that can read it or uh, another system can change uh, a resource and later can read it. To see a tangible example of this resource in action, let's see that I would like to print the delta time each tick. Here we are in the gameplay state, this is the update function and as you can see there is no sign of delta time, so how can I print this information? We know that the data contain a word and the word contain the resource. We also know that Amethyst store the delta time information inside the time the resource. So let's try to read this time and print the delta time each time this function is executed. Checking the terminal right now, you can see that uh, indeed the delta time is printing. As I said before, the data contains the word and using the function read resource and by setting the type uh, of the resource that I want to read, I can retrieve the time resource that is just a reference and also is an immutable reference because I am reading the resource. I, I can just call the function delta seconds in order to obtain the delta time of this frame. This function here has mesh and material that uh, use these two helper function that I have defined, create mesh and create material. This create mesh accept the mesh data and return an handle mesh. This means that I am not using the mesh data directly as component as I did before for the light 
and for the camera or for the transformation. Uh, in set, here I am using again the handle to the mesh. Let's try to see what's inside the create mesh function. There is something familiar inside this function. Here we are taking the loader resource and also again here we are taking the asset storage resource. Using the function loader from data and passing the mesh data that I created here, basically I am obtained the handle to the mesh that then is used as component of the sphere entity. But why it works in this way and is not possible uh, to create a mesh like we did for the light or for the camera? If we think a bit more about it, we can remember that the things uh, rendered on screen are rendered by the GPU. What this means is that uh, the GPU must know what to render and to know it, you must set all the data inside the memory of the GPU. This mechanism is handled by the loader and since the, there are many types that you can store inside the GPU memory, there is the concept of asset storage. Indeed, there are a lot of storage, for example, the asset storage for the mesh, like in this case, or the asset storage for the textures, or for the materials and so on. So what this load from data function does is to take the mesh data, take the asset storage, store this mesh data inside the asset storage and return an handle that we can use as component later. Let's review instead the create material. Here we are passing the the color of the material that uh, I want to use, which is white now, uh, the metallic and the roughness of this new material. Let's review it. I am also passing the word and as I did before, here I am loading the loader resource. Here I am loading again the asset storage, this time for the texture and using the exactly same function, I am uh, creating the texture albedo with the color that I have passed and I am storing inside the GPUs. Here I am doing the same thing with the metallic and the roughness texture. I am creating the texture here and I am storing this texture inside the GPUs. I have to also create a material and for doing it the first thing to do is to load the asset storage for the materials here, create the material here with the albedo handle and the metallic roughness texture handle and store it inside the GPUs using always the same function load from data. If we think a bit more about the handle mesh and the handle material, they are really handy, they are just something that point to a part of memory in the GPU. This is really nice because if we clone the handle, we can reuse it in even other entities. Let's try an example. Uh, what I want to do now is to spawn a new sphere each two seconds with a random position. The first thing that we want to do then is to find a way to share these handles. Here I have created a new structure that is called my handle storage. Inside the loading state game state, I am adding this resource using the add resource. Now that this resource is inside the world, I can retrieve this resource anywhere, uh, even inside another game state. Now that the sphere entity is slightly different because instead to create a new mesh each time it's called and a new material it creates once and returns a clone of the handle to that mesh. And the other part to see instead is the update function. I am adding a new sphere each two seconds. Here we go, here we have the game that each two seconds uh, it adds a new sphere on screen using the same data over and over. What if I want to move these spheres 
I have to change the transformation component. But we will talk about it in the next video. And for this one, that's it. See you next week. Bye.